the wheel of time turns and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. With these words begins Robert Jordan's magnum opus. Welcome to the first video in our new series, dedicated to the universe of the Wheel of Time. Sit back and let yourself be carried away by the history of the world, which takes place in a time that is centuries away from ours. When a new age is born, it does not begin from scratch, but comes carrying with it the legacy of the previous era. It is no different in the world of the Wheel of Time. Before discussing the most important events described in the series created by Robert Jordan, we must bring you closer to the events happening centuries earlier, starting with the Second Age, the Age of Legends. During the Second Age, humanity experienced tremendous development in every way, reaching the peak of progress. The development of technology contributed to the development of known devices such as cars, which were called Joe Cars during the Age of Legends leading to the creation of their flying version and planes called show wings. There were also completely new inventions, such as glow bulbs, which were able to emit light without needing to be charged or replaced. Moreover, new ways of travelling were discovered, such as skimming, using which people were moved into a void, only to, moments later, appear in a completely different place in the world. All this was made possible by the use of the One Power, the source of magical force, coming from the true source, created by the creator at the time of the creation of the universe. The One Power had two halves, the female one, called Saida, and the male one, called Saidin, and not everyone could use the One Power. The ability to draw from the source and create weaves was possessed by a small part of society, which formed an organization to guard their abilities so that no one would use the One Power for any purpose other than the help and development of humanity. The members of this organization called themselves Aes Sedai, which in the old tongue means servants of all. The Aes Sedai were the most prominent humans of the Age of Legends. They were the guardians of world peace. Being the de facto global parliament, they were engaged in combating diseases and delving into philosophy, trying to discover the secrets of the universe. During the Second Age, the philosophy of the Wheel of Time appeared, representing the passing and coming centuries. The wheel had seven spokes, representing seven eras, and was powered by the One Power. It was believed that when one era passes into the next, great changes will take place in the world, although the transition itself is not felt in any special way. In addition, the concept of the Pattern of the Ages had appeared which is created on an ongoing basis based on decisions made by people. However, the pattern was not created uncontrollably. When there was a threat to the pattern, the wheel would send personalities to the pattern to influence people's behavior to preserve the pattern. Such people were referred to as Taverin, pattern changers. Taverin, unlike the rest of humanity, had limited free will because they were born with a specific task to fulfill. At the end of the Second Age, Aes Sedai was headed by one of the most prominent members of this association. His name was Luz Therin Telamon. Three names evidence for his uniqueness, because during the Age of Legends, the second and third name was given for dedication to the development of humanity. Sitting on the high seat and wearing the Ring of Tamerlan, he was the most important man in the world and one of the strongest channelers of the One Power. Only the philosopher and theologian Ilan Morin Tedronai could compare with him in magical abilities. Luz Therin Telamon led a community that might seem utopian at first glance. Throughout the Second Age, problems such as hunger, poverty, war and disease were eliminated, allowing ordinary people to live to the age of 120, while Aes Sedai, aided somewhat by the One Power, were able to live for 700 years. Human nature, however, remained unchanged, which caused certain problems to smolder beneath the surface of this paradise. There were still cases of discrimination and humiliation of others, despite all people being equal before the law, and even murder was not entirely eliminated. However, there was no prison in the Second Age, because when the accused was proven guilty, he vowed never to commit the crime again. This promise was binding, 
because it was made using the One Power and a powerful magical object, a Terangriel, later called the Oath Rod. Another human trait the Age of Legends hadn't eliminated was the lust for power, which individuals still pursued under the guise of a desire to help society. While Luz Theron Telamon was in charge of Aes Sedai, a new source of magical power was discovered, distinct from the One Power, which was not divided into male and female parts. Two scientists from the Kolam Dan University, Bidemon and Mierin Erenile, who was Luz Theron's mistress, made this discovery. To present the world with their discovery, the researchers invited many people to the university, where they planned to show what a new kind of magic called true power is capable of. They targeted a great sphere levitating over the university, called the Sharam, whose original purpose, like many things that happened or existed in the First Age, was unknown to scientists at the end of the Second Age. Using their new power, Baidomon and Mierin Erenail opened a rift in the Pattern of the Ages to get to the source of the true power. Unfortunately, the experiment failed, leading to a gigantic explosion that destroyed Sharam and killed many people at the university, including Baidomon. Soon after, it was revealed that, in addition to destroying the sphere, this experiment also created a breach in reality, allowing an extremely powerful entity, later called Shaitan, to enter the world. Shaitan, or the Dark One, was the nemesis of the creator that arose with the beginning of the Wheel of Time. His goal was to destroy the wheel to recreate the universe according to his own design. Through the boar, created as a result of the explosion, he began to impact the world directly. The first visible effect was a change around the experimental site. The island where Kalam Dan was located became a mountain called Sheol Gu, protecting the boar. Additionally, the area around the mountain became a barren wasteland. Over the next 100 years, more societal problems began to come to light, plaguing society, compounded by people's bad qualities. At some point, people began to swear allegiance to the Dark One, wanting to obtain certain benefits from him, such as wealth or power. The situation got worse when the members of the Aes Sedai began to go to Shail Ghul to join Shaitan. Among the most powerful channelers was Ashar Murad Chuain, later known as Aginor. He was responsible for creating the army for the Dark One. Experimenting with the One Power over humans, he created Trollocs, a terrifying hybrid of humans and animals. From that moment on, the Trollocs were the main armed force with which Sheol Ghul would conquer the world. Apart from Ishar, other powerful Aes Sedai joined the Dark One, such as Mierin Erenile later known as Lanfear, motivated by the desire to recover Luz Therin, who married another member of the Aes Sedai, and Barret Belmadar, who took the name Demandred, hoping to become more powerful than Telamon. The biggest blow to the Aes Sedai was when, in the Hall of the Servants in the city of Parandisan, the center of Aes Sedai's power, Ilan Morin Tedronai announced that he was joining Shaitan by taking the name Ishamael, which in Old Tongue means traitor to hope. Tedronai's motives were different from those of the other Aes Sedai. Being a theologian and delving into the latest discoveries about the Wheel of Time, the Creator and the Dark One, he decided that humanity had no chance to defend itself and the world from Shaitan's evil. Every era, Shaitan appears in the world to conquer it, and humanity somehow overcomes it every time. But one day humanity would not succeed, so they should save the suffering for future generations and surrender now. In addition, Tedronai decided that, contrary to popular belief about the Seven Eras, the wheel would rotate endlessly until it was destroyed. Being the most powerful channeler who joined the Dark One, he became the leader of the Forsaken, the sect of Aes Sedai who supported Shaitan. The period of those 100 years during which society was undone was called the Years of Collapse, but this was only a prelude to something much worse, the War of the Shadow better known as the War of Power. The War of Power began when armies of Trollocs and those who had joined the Dark One moved, under the leadership of the Forsaken, into the world, doing unimaginably cruel things. Entire cities disappeared, and hundreds of thousands of people died in countless battles and sieges. The early years of the war were tragic for the forces fighting against the Dark One, known as the Forces of the Light 
because those who remained loyal to the creator didn't know war or weapons, having only ever lived in a period of world peace. Over the years they created weapons to help them win against the Trollocs and their allies. New weaves of the One Power were also created. One of them was the Balefire, which contributed to the complete removal of man, his soul and achievements from the pattern of the ages. It began to be used on a massive scale by both sides of the conflict, and was used almost until the end of the war. After ten years of war, Ishamael wanted to bring the conflict to its imminent end. To that end he attacked Parendison, but was defeated there by troops fighting under the command of Luce Therin Telamon, who gained the nickname Dragon during the war. Planning a counterattack, Luz Therin wanted to gather as much force as possible and attack Shael Ghul itself. He planned to gather the most powerful Aes Sedai, both men and women, in a concerted effort to close the boar and remove the influence of the Dark One from the world, weakening the Shadow troops in the process. Luz Therin wanted to use seals made of indestructible stone called Coendelar. Dragon presented his plan, saying it would succeed if six male and seven female Aes Sedai, forming the so-called Circle, were involved in its execution. The Sidon channelers supported this plan, but the women of Aes Sedai, under the leadership of Latraposse de Coombe, opposed it, wanting to use two powerful Saangriel to create a new prison for the Dark One. As a result of constant attacks from the Trollocs and Shaitan's other allies, the women's plans had no chance of success, but they still refused to support the dragon in his venture. Left to his own devices, Luz Therin Telamon gathered 113 male Aes Sedai, later called the Hundred Companions, and an army of 10,000 soldiers, and advanced on Sheol Ghul. When the battle began on the mountain slopes, the dragon and the Hundred Companions broke through to the boar itself and placed seals, locking the Dark One in a new prison. Along with Shaitan, thirteen of the most powerful Forsaken were imprisoned, but Ishamael was not fully constrained, left in a state where he could leave prison once every thousand years for forty years. The victory over the Dark One was an extremely costly one. All of Luz Therin's ten thousand soldiers lay dead, and several dozen Aes Sedai were also killed. The moment that decided the future of the world was the dragon's decision to use the One Power directly on Shaitan to close his prison completely. The Dark Entity used this to contaminate Sidon. This taint led every member of the Aes Sedai who used this part of the power to fall into madness and wreak havoc all around him. The first victims of this taint were the 68 companions who survived the attack on Sheol Ghul and Luz Theron Telamon himself who, in a madness, killed his wife Elena and his children, as well as the servants who were in their home. The dragon realized what had happened only when Ishamael, using true power, healed his mind. Immersed in grief and anger at himself, the hero of the War of Power moved to a place far from his home and drew so much of the One Power that it led to a great magical explosion, which killed him and created a great volcanic mountain in his place which in later centuries received the name Dragon Mount. The remainder of the Hundred Companions spread throughout the world, and, along with the other male Aes Sedai, began to use the One Power to such an extent that over the years they brought about a complete change of the world, destroying one land and creating another, as well as turning deserts into seas and vice versa. The women of the Aes Sedai who survived the War of Power tracked down and killed the Sidon Channelers, or tamed them, cutting them off from their ability to weave, which in consequence sooner or later led to the death of the unfortunate. When the last male Aes Sedai were neutralized and the geographical change of the world, called the breaking of the world, ended, humanity entered another era, called the Third Age. In our upcoming videos on the Wheel of Time franchise, we will discuss the events of the two initial periods of the Third Age. We plan to cover the battles of many other fantasy, sci-fi and space opera universes, so make sure you have subscribed and press the bell button. Please consider liking and sharing, as it helps immensely, and don't forget to comment. We will try to read and respond to every comment, as we want to know what you think about this video and which videos you hope to see in the future. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel, and we'll catch you on the next one.